Hi friends, this is Alexine. I'm on the Sun Porch Studio. Um, I, I can call it Grace Light Studio, Sun Porch. Um, and I'm here for my 20 minute recess during the 100 day project. If you haven't heard of the 100 day project yet, look up hashtag do the 100 day project on Instagram and you can see um, submissions by different people who are participating around the world doing projects of their their choice um, in their their own creative practices and mine is a 20 minute creative recess focusing on crochet um, I also like to watercolor but for the cold season and um, like winter time I picked up my crochet which was my first love and I've been devoted to it because I keep getting inspired to make um, one thing after another like the mini bowls and the, the small mats and I have more ideas stemming off from from those that I submitted to the spring collection um, you can check out my website it, or my shop. It's called Grace Light Studio. GraceLightStudio.com and everything is there. It's it's for it's on offer. So if you see something, um, let me know. Or if you have other ideas, you can s send me feedback. Um, I'm wearing my glasses today, my reading glasses, and they're helping. And. Um, let me show you, I'm going to move the camera and show you a piece that I have. This is a, an acrylic heart and it's chunky yarn. I'll just do it like this. I think this is beautiful. It's like um, a sort of a rust burnt orange color. It's got a bit of a sheen, some honey color and teal green or I don't know if it's teal or turquoise but it blends very well it's a variegated yarn so it, it was all one from one skein and the colors change up on their own and if I pull it up close you can see some of the stitching and I just use this for decorative purposes I've had it for a few years and sometimes I'll bring it out in different seasons and display it on a side table um, and also I could use it for a hot pad if I want to bring the, the kettle out, the heated tea kettle. Um, it'll protect the surface. Um, I think it could also be used under candles, but I don't like to do that because I'm, uh, my husband said I'm the fire marshal. I'm, I'm really careful about flames, open flames. Um, so yeah, I just want to share that. That was a bit of show and tell. And then my project that I'm going to be working on um, today, probably not right now, um, is a rose-inspired pattern with um, see the blue, the greens, the rosy color, and then cream. And this matches, uh, I have a beautiful blanket from A Thousand Roses Art. I'll show that sometime. I showed one of my, my plush blankets from A Thousand Roses Art before, um, but it was the garden theme. And, um, uh, but I also have one called um, The Rose is Beautiful in All Its Stages. And that is beautiful. And um, that rose pattern, along with the rose pattern of one of my favorite mugs from Royal Albert, and um and also some some uh sleepwear that i have it's a, a pattern that just keeps coming up in, in various ways and it has th this color scheme so i'm going to try to try to um make it my own with the crochet mini bowls and coasters and see what i come up with and um i can explore with um, different shades of green as well so yeah i just wanted to share that and since I have you here, I might as well just get started, right? At least get my hook, get my loop going <laughs> and put it on the hook.
and say I did something creative today. And I wish that I could um, set up outside. It is gorgeous outside. It feels perfect. Well, it feels like a slight chill in the air, but there's no insects and it's sunny, it's dry. It's a clear day. It's lovely. It's the beginnings of spring. I have the windows open over here on the, um, so I'm on the porch. So I have some of the windows open and uh, I can hear the birds, but I can also hear um, a few people who are getting off work. There's a construction site not too far away and the workers park um, on the opposite side of my, my street up the road. Um, Cause there's no, it's, it's usually just trees over there. So they've taken um, the opportunity <laughs> to park along the street and it brings some activities and excitement to our neighborhood that's usually so quiet. That is me rambling on, pardon me. Okay, so I have the loop on the hook and this is a 2.75 millimeter hook, which is quite small. This one here in comparison is a four millimeter hook. I don't know if you can see the difference. Um, and I have this small one because the yarn is so thin. It's not the standard um, worsted weight yarn that um, we typically would, would see um, with the big skeins. This is like a little small hand size skein. <clears throat> and so for this pattern, I'm going to do another ripple crochet pattern. So it's multiples of 12 stitches plus three. So I decided to do um, 48. 48 single um 40, 48 chains and then three more so it's like 48 from that 51 cro crochet chains one <laughs> two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that's the first ten i don't want to bore you <laughs> Have you watched me do 58 or 51 chains? And guys, forgive me for stumbling over my words. I'm still getting used to talking out loud on camera. I've always been a, a word person, but usually um, reading and um, writing and editing and uh, participating in the chats. So I look forward to growing and becoming more comfortable on camera and speaking and finding um, my groove <laughs> and being an effective communicator and getting to know some of you and uh, just sharing presence, you know, being present and making a space and um, being welcoming to other people. Um, there was a book I read once, it was called um, A Life That Says Welcome. And uh, we can be hospitable. The, the, the Word of God tells us that we should um, show hospitality one to another. And there's different ways to do that. So I could, you know, I'm an introvert and I work a lot full time. I've been raising the children, they're grown now. But this is one way I can show hospitality. I can set aside this time just to to show up. Um, invite you to my virtual space here. Welcome, come again. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll find more things to share and, and discuss with you. Let me know what you think. Um, do you just want to see me crochet? Do you just want us to see me do a show and tell where I have the products and hold them up for you to see? 
I have one, another one over here. This is from years ago. Um, this is another crocheted mat. It's multicolored. I think it looks more, it's like festive. Um, yeah, this has been around and they're very hardy. I think I've had this probably since 2012, 13. So they're durable. And guys, when, um, and this is another cotton one with the same um, brand of yarn. It's Catania by Schackenmeyer. Um, and if they, like this one has held its color over the time and, and shape, so I wouldn't probably use it for um, like scrubbing. But I have another one that I sat in the sun for a, a, quite a long time and it faded just a bit. And so that one I decided, oh, I could, uh, use it to wash my favorite rose mug, my china mug. And it's gentle and it's soft on my hands, but nub nubby enough, knotty enough to um, scrub out um, like stains and um, without damaging the china. So I think I'm gonna make more and, and to show you and maybe some of you would want to have some to wash your delicate dishes too. And I don't only wash the delicate dishes. I have some that I um, use to, to just to wash the regular dinner dishes. Um, so it's very effective and I'm glad that I discovered that use for my products. They don't have to just be to look at. They can be practical as well. Functionally beautiful. Um, Another thing that I do with these uh, coasters, besides being coasters or dish scrubbers and uh, gentle polishers for China, is to um, polish the wood furniture. Put some, I spray some wood uh, furniture polish and use the cloth to, to buff and shine the surface of the furniture. I have some tables, some maple wood tables that my grandmother had. And I remember them uh, as I, from when I was growing up as a small child. She had them when I was, when I was born. Um, and she said that I cut my teeth, you know, as a baby, when your teeth cut through your gums. She said, um, she's like, she said, oh, this must be why you love these tables so much because you cut your teeth on them when you were coming up. And so I inherited those tables. She didn't want them anymore. And <laughs> my grandmother could easily let stuff go. And uh, I think I'm the sentimental one. And uh, so I'm glad that I, I can use my crochet and polish those maple wood tables and keep them shining and uh speaking of grandma she's the one that i picked up my crochet um passion from i used to lean on her arm out on the porch or it wasn't really a porch we, we called it a den back then but it was pretty much the same thing i have here except that um it wasn't closed off from the, the house we could step down from the dining room and, and step through to, straight to the kitchen. But this porch is closed off. And you have to enter into the, um, the home, you know, through a door. But yeah, I used to sit on the love seat with grandma in the den and lean on her, her arms. My arms are kind of like hers. It's some soft upper arms. And she would have her rhythm going with her crochet and I would just watch that, that, um, the rhythm and motion that she was making with her, her hands. And uh, later when I, um, you know, had the opportunity to pick up a hook, a crochet hook and yarn, um, it was easier for me. It wasn't so, so hard for me to um, know how to hold my hands and get the tension right and um, do the stitches. It felt natural to me and some things do not feel natural to me at all so I, I was glad that uh, I could find something that I was you know really good at and enjoyed 
and uh, grandma, she uh, preferred to do knitting most of the time. She knit garments like sweaters and yeah, sweaters and um, vests and hats and I don't know what else she could sew too. Um, but I, I prefer crochet. I admire knitting and I have a few few pieces that I started, but um, I haven't become efficient at knitting. Maybe um, that is something I'll pursue sometime in the future, I don't know. But, but I love crochet and um, there's so many uh, patterns and um, stitches that you can combine to make um, unique pieces. Um, so I'll, I'll keep sharing, I think as long as I enjoy it and uh, maybe sometime I'll also show you my uh, watercolor artwork that I enjoy um, but I'm purposely focusing on the crochet now because I want to build my collection and um, keep my shop fresh and just give it a um, you know the dedication that it deserves and um, and so far, so good. I'm, I'm really pleased with how things have gone. It's not even a full year yet since I launched Grace Light Studio um, in the state of Maryland where, where I'm based. Um, so please, yeah, come visit my, my online home sometime. Show some love. And uh, you can check me out also on Instagram.com to communicate with me in the, the DMs, the direct messages. I um, I'll check for, for um, comments and I respond as, <laughs> as soon as I'm able. I, I do like genuine uh, communication and uh, that's how I ended up here doing the YouTube videos because I've already been uh, relating to other people um, and not about necessarily about crochet. <laughs> I like intercultural communication. I'm very interested in the Kenyan uh, YouTube movement. Um, I don't know, have you heard of Marwa? I am Marwa. Look at, um, if you look up the channel, I A M, like I am, I A M underscore Marwa, M A R W A, you'll see his channel. And Marwa is, um, they, they call him the Travel Commando, and he, um, started from his home village in Kenya called uh, Nyabuhanse and um, I'm trying to think I think it's in Migori County or next to Migori County and it's near the border of Tanzania and Marwa is like known far and wide um, around the world um, from his YouTube videos and he's lived in Colombia and Mexico, um, traveled to Jamaica and many other countries. And the whole family, his mother and uh, one of his uh, sisters, Dee Mwango, um, and his younger brother, Davy Jr. Um, they all have YouTube channels as well. And Uncle Mo from Kenya. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they started a movement, and not just them, but the entire, not the entire, but it would seem like it's the entire village. Um, all the young people, it seems, have learned from Mara about YouTube and um, how to use their cameras uh, to leverage the opportunity and to grow their followings and are really motivated and motivating. And um, those of us who watch and support have come to know one another. We tend to show up in the same uh, chat communities. Um, some of us show up for certain premieres, um, depending on what time zones we're in. So it's it's really um, engaging and a learning experience as well. Uh, my my uh, cooking has taken off and uh, my, um, I don't know what you call it, like my um, shopping ingredients have changed because 
I've already been become a pescatarian from hmm, since 2020 during the pandemic. Um, I don't know, my appetite changed. And I never was a big um, fish enthusiast, but <laughs> I had to find some kind of protein to, to eat besides um, the beans and eggs. So I started to um, eat more salmon, but that gets tiring after a while too. How much salmon and tuna does one want? And um, so I needed to spice things up and I just knew to get my uh, my fish from the the Latin carryouts like um, Peruvian charbroil places. They have those in Maryland where I live um, and uh, West African um, restaurants, the, especially the Nigerian ones and the, the ones from Ghana. My next door neighbor actually has a, a Ghanaian restaurant. He's an excellent chef. Um, his restaurant in uh, Northwest Washington, D.C. Um, if you're in the Washington, D.C. area area visiting or live here, I could recommend Apio, A-P-P-I-O-O. -O. Um, I think it's called Apio Grill. Oh, goodness, their red snapper is delicious. And um, I know that some people love their uh, goat soup. I like this um, spinach fish and um, something called kele wele, which is plantains, spiced plantains. It's, it's got a kick to it and some with some, some peanuts stirred into the mix too. Love it. And um, I, I make my plantains like that at home sometimes. Um, love fufu and stew or vegetables. So I've picked up African yam so far. Um, I'm gonna make green banana and, and um, try some making some cassava. And um, I've made, um, maybe I'll make this another video and talk about my creative, creative um, practice in the kitchen expanding my um, repertoire of, of culinary skills. I'm learning and um, I'm enjoying it and it's thanks to the YouTube community. So with that guys, it's 22 minutes and 42 seconds I've been on here talking and that's a lot of talking for Alexine. <laughs> Quiet Alexine. Um, thanks for visiting with me. I um, Hope you enjoyed my company. I'm glad to have spent this time with you and I hope that um, I will see you again, that you'll, you'll return. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up, like the video, um, leave a comment and consider subscribing. And that will help the channel to grow and encourage me to, to keep going. Thanks everyone. Have a blessed rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye. <laughs>